We are I. I sit here on this Wednesday morning thinking about something that I just heard Dr. Jordan Peterson explain in in great detail. And this is something that's been explained to me in great detail a lot through my adult life. And it's only been explained to me by, by people who have air quotes made it, you know, and whatever that, whatever that looks like, you know, really we're just more, more likely than not, or, or more so just talking about finances. You know, no matter what the rest of their life looks like, good or bad, disarray, or, you know, whether or not that they have their life together or a solid foundation, doesn't matter. But like, I'm talking strictly just about finances. You know, about 15 years ago, you know, roughly around there, I had somebody explain to me, they're like, but the one thing that you will never see is a successful person with a single source of income. He's like, it's so rare. It's like a unicorn. It's very, very rare that somebody has a single source of income and is financially liberated. As he said, you know, if you look at it from the long term, that person with a single source of income, if they are temporarily financially liberated, like this doesn't mean that they are going to be then financially liberated through the course of time because their exposure to failure is so high. You know, because if anything happens to that that one aspect of income, you know, like it's gonna be really tough for them. You know, but if you have multiple sources of income, you have an opportunity to be able to le- leverage other sources in a time of need. You know, where not one source of income can affect you so greatly that is then going to have a trickle down effect to the rest of your life. Like, yes, you might have to reposition and, you know, move on to something else, but you are not, you're not in a position that is going to take you out. I was like, okay. He's like, you know, whether that be you have, you know, some real estate holdings on top of your day job, you know, on top of, you know, some stocks there trading well, or, you know, an RSP or TFSA, like just something that, is creating some kind of extra income just in case. You know, but he's like, you really need to focus on this. He's like, look at all the successful people around you and tell me one person who's financially successful who has a single source of income. So I looked around me and I've looked around me my entire adult life and I realized that this is true. Like there are some people who annually do very well, you know, but they don't do as well as people who have multiple sources of income. And the one thing that I do see with these people who have a single source of income who do well annually is I have seen them get rocked over the years. You know, and myself over the years being one of them because I also realized talking about this is it's really difficult, you know, to successfully maneuver in life to be able to create multiple sources of income for yourself. You have to be, you have to be very strict with your time because you can chase a lot of rabbit holes. You have to be very strict with the opportunities that, you know, lay before you because you need to be able to clearly and fully understand how valuable time is. And if you waste it, you're not going to end up creating you know, multiple sources of income for yourself, you're going to be chasing multiple empty avenues of that said such dream. So what Dr. Jordan Peterson is saying is that, you know, like if you have, if you have an opinion, especially nowadays, you know, because of the shit that he's going through specifically right now in Canada, if you have an opinion, you almost need to be in a position where You are not controlled by a board. You are not controlled by an employer. You are not controlled by a community. You're not controlled by any one of these things to be able to have a free expressed opinion. 
because all these situations then affect you financially and you don't want to financially rock your boat. But if you have, you know, achieved a certain level of success from multiple different revenue streams, like you have the opportunity to be a lot more mobile in life. And again, you see this even with people as high up as Elon Musk, you know, not worried about the things he does or says because he's reached a, a certain point in his life financially that even if he does take a hit, yes, he's going to lose a lot, but it's not going to necessarily change his life in a way that he doesn't have financial liberation. And what does financial liberation like really mean to us? I know I have my idea of what financial liberation, you know, means to me is where you just at the end of the day really can pay your bills without having to worry. That you just know that the money is going to be there to be able to pay your bills and that there's stability to those revenue streams. Albeit you can guarantee the security of those revenue streams, but if you have multiple revenue streams, this offers that stability. And if you look at what a family unit does, and especially more so nowadays, is having, you know, a joint family income where you have, you know, a, a husband and a wife or two people living together to be able to do life together, no matter what that looks like. You've created those multiple revenue streams because you look at it, this family unit, no matter what the family unit may look like. You have multiple people contributing financially to that, which is multiple sources of income. So as, as an individual, you don't necessarily need to have three if you're living, you know, life with somebody. Because then you might not need or you might only need to be able to create a single revenue source between two people because you already have a revenue stream outside of that. But if you are a single individual, if you have one, it's not the expectation that necessarily you need three sources of income. I think three sources of income, that third is always that safety and security blanket. But just having something else that generates you a nominal amount of money it doesn't have to be a lot. You know, but something that just generates a nominal amount of return so that you, you know, you have something tangible. You know, and I often looked at this as, you know, could one of these in a, in a minority role, you know, be a home or, you know, you're paying down your mortgage, you're gaining equity. It's like, well, yes and no, because, you know, like this is essentially a potential savings account that you're banking on and hoping has value in the future, but, you know, doesn't really necessarily give you day-to-day -day income to pay your bills. And yes, you could theoretically draw against that in a home equity line of credit or a refinance or whatever. But again, then your your payments go up and you take this money out and then you have to really hope that your property value goes up because of the fact that if it doesn't, now you're underwater. So you can't really look at it like that there's an abundant amount of security in, in home equity. So I put that very low on the list, you know, maybe like 5%. You know, like It's nice that it's there. It's nice if you have it. But until you actualize those funds, it's completely theoretical how much it may or may not be worth. And the amount of money that you have to pay for that, are you any further ahead based on the interest that you have to pay based on when you cash out? You don't really know because you don't really know at the point in time when you have the opportunity to cash that equity out. So you're talking about money that's coming in. You know, and I always used to think that it's like it need to be an abundant amount of extra income coming in. It's like, no, it just needs to be something that could be an extra, you know, 50 bucks a week. It could be an extra, you know, couple hundred dollars a month. But the thing is that you've done that, you've initiated that process and that in real time, the wheels are starting to turn. And all you have to do is nurture that to turn that $50 a week into maybe $100 a week and then progress it from there. But the simple fact that you've made moves to, to help that, to help that scenario and that quest, because now all you have to do is nurture and grow it. But this is one thing that I also believe that they don't teach in school is that, you know, all these people who are successful, financially liberated, have multiple sources of income, but school doesn't necessarily teach you that. School teaches you to go in and, you know, get this education, to get this job, where you work at this one job. But it doesn't equal financial liberation. It doesn't. It can't. It, it can't in most circumstances. 
Yes, there's going to be exceptions to the rule, and I'm sure you can pick out some. But again, if you look at the vast majority of people, this is not the case. You can kind of predict the life of somebody who's going to be working, you know, eight or 10 hours a day for, you know, maybe $5 over minimum wage. It's incredibly subjected to inf or inflation and, you know, interest rates rising and food prices rising. And, you know, are we ever going to go back where, you know, maybe 20% or 30% of your paycheck goes to home expenses? You know, because in Canada, I believe now it's edging closer to 70% is going towards just mortgage payments and interest payments and, you know, insurance payments just for your home and outside of anything else, you're left with maybe 30%, 35% of your paycheck to be able to go to every other aspect of your life. It's very hard to do that when you're making maybe $5 over the minimum wage, $10 over the minimum wage especially when property taxes go up, provincial taxes go up, municipal taxes go up, you know, federal taxes go up at the same time that your paycheck doesn't move, except for going down what's available funds for you. So what are you doing right now? What are you doing in real time? What are you willing to be able to do in the future to be able to create multiple sources of revenue? Because this is, I think this is the key to a little bit of little bit of happiness only to the fact that you don't have to stress so much about your bills every month.